I gotta try to route this thing through here and it's a lot thicker than it was before. Hello, people of the internet. Today I'm going to continue working on my 2021 Ford Bronco Black Diamond Edition. If you're new and you like to get caught up on this rig, up above my head is a video that has a delicious recipe for toasted belly button lint flavored cake pops. Why am I so dumb? So this is a little bit of a continuation of something I started on the Bronco about a month back that I had to fabricate something for. I'm not really saying much here. Hood struts. Ta-da! Where are you? Ah, there it is. So this is the custom bracket that I had the barbecue grill guys next door make for the Bronco. And then I went and got it powder coated so it'll match the factory brackets right here in the engine bay so it looks factory like it came like this. What size are you? Eight millimeter. Same thing as my Ranger. Everything on the Ranger is eight mil. I'm gonna mount this bracket onto the catch can. Okay, just a tiny bit of Loctite. Parking this hardware approximately to fucking good enough. Just in case you're watching this and you wanna make this bracket for yourself, I have the CAD file saved to cut this thing out. If, if you're interested in it. Um, also, the guys that cut it out for me at the barbecue grill shop, maybe I could talk them into making a batch of these things. It's not what they do for their business, but if enough people are interested, let me know in the comment section below. Maybe I'll get them to do like a limited batch of these things. I'm probably gonna end up putting this thing on the lift to figure out where I wanna route my drain line. This literally looks like it came from the factory in this location. Other than the fact that it's carbon fiber, that's kind of not OEM, but still. So only one thing I can see, there's a little bit of movement right there if you move it up and down. So actually I have an even better solution what I can do. Some of this stuff right here, it's 3M adhesive with a foam pad. There's actually a couple little marks. It's really hard to see. See right there? Right there? That's where it would have vibration issues. So, that right there. There. Oh, much better. Much, much better. Now that that's mounted in place, I screwed up and only ordered one of the 90 degree dash 10 elbows. So I have to go get one tomorrow morning at the hot rod shop. Hopefully they have them. But I'm doing multiple things to the Bronco in this video. You didn't expect me to make a 15 minute long video just on a catch can, did you? A very large box sitting in the corner of the shop for about a month now, and this goes to the Bronco. So because I ordered the black diamond package of the Bronco, it came with these steel bumpers, front and rear, that allow for customization. See, it has all these different bolts all over the place. It allows you to remove things, add things on if you want. That's exactly what I plan on doing, but there might be some fabrication with this as well because I'm not satisfied with straight out of the box. This is gonna require a high level of carefuling that I must perform. It's like surgery on a sea cucumber. Careful. It's actually pretty nice. It's got the same exact finish as the front bumper. Neither this bar nor the lights I bought for it were sponsored. I searched the internet for what I thought was the best looking product. And then like the catch can, I reached out to Nuke Performance, 
when I found that catch can and they actually were willing to sponsor it. This company didn't get back to me. Man, this looks good. I mean, nailed it with the powder coating. This side, the holes don't line up very well. I actually like the look of this hoop on its own. It, it's subtle, it's just a little tiny lip right there. Unlike the factory optional one from Ford, which pretty much hides the Bronco letters. That's why I didn't go with the factory one. But yeah, it matches really well. The bolt holes were a little off, but not too, too bad, it wasn't a deal breaker. As for the lights, these were incredibly difficult to track down a set of because, and yes, it's the next day, that's why my shirt is a different color. I don't just randomly change wardrobe in the middle of the day. Unless I spill something on myself or forget to put deodorant on and my shirt starts to really stink. No one likes BO. <laughs> the fog lights, they are PIA LP570 LED and they're made in Japan to stay in theme with my Ray's Engineering TE37X wheels. I'm guessing possibly global supply chain issues is why they were so hard to find these. I searched like 50 different websites until I found someone that had them in stock and it was actually a little shop somewhere in Northern Arizona. Let's just hope that these things fit. I think that I'm gonna end up having to drill my own holes. Yes, they fit. So that will go there. Oh, hell yeah, that's gonna be so sick, it's gonna work. I put so much thought into this is to the fact that if you look at the font on here, the white writing, it's got four horizontal lines, four horizontal lines in the grill with white font that is a similar bold white font. Don't act like you're surprised that I put this much thought into something as simple as fog lights though. Cue the fabrication. When I drilled out the hole for the center one, I actually made it a few millimeters further than the one off to the side because the front of the truck has a natural kind of curvature to it, just ever so subtle. And I wanted the fog lights to kind of follow that natural curvature of the bow in the front of the grill right here. And then the top of each fog light should be centered between the lettering. I can adjust it to make it perfect, but. Last one. And these insanely expensive elbows. So this one, we're gonna go here. If you've ever worked on a Ford product before that has these annoying camper-proof orange and black fittings on the PCB lines, they're a huge pain in the ass to remove. You have to like undo the little prongs underneath of them. There's three of them. I have a better solution for what I'm about to do. Okay, so I just cut the line, not the fitting underneath. Got it. Ha! I don't have to take the fitting off. I can just slip the new hose on it. Well, let's test it. Yeah. At the end of it, gonna go right there. So now I know exactly where I gotta cut it. Cut it. Ah. Holy shit. 
Now I need some lube. An intelligent human being would have done this part first so they could have put it in a vise. I'm not intelligent, clearly, because <laughs> I did this part second. Yeah, that's gonna work just nice. Just like that. So I cut it just to the right length so that way it would follow the line of these other ones over here. They all kind of flow at that same angle. And then this one's got a shorter elbow that's gonna go down below so that hose will follow the same path. Hello, welcome to the next day. Hopefully it's the last day in this video. I saved the best for last though. I wanna show you something really cool that this Bronco does. So I'm gonna go on my infotainment system, go to features and owner's manual. And I have a digital owner's manual built into this thing. So you don't have to have a book. So then I'm gonna search aux, that should work, auxiliary switch wiring. The Bronco is pre-wired from the factory. Six different auxiliary switches and different wiring configurations. So using that chart of those locations, I then have up here on the roof and I have six different auxiliary switches that are all wired and powered up already. Then if I go into here, identifying the switch wiring, I select that and it tells you what each one of those auxiliary switches is rated for in amps. So we actually have one for 30 amps. I would imagine that would be for maybe a winch or a cooler. And then here is your non-powered circuits in their locations. So I'm gonna use circuit C, front grill. So if you look down here in the corner of the engine bay, you'll see I got a bunch of wires that are capped off. These all go to the different various auxiliary switches. And then these ones right here, especially this violet and green one this is what i'm going to use for my fog lights this is a 10 amp circuit it comes out right here at the top of the radiator core support this little distribution box right here in the engine bay has all the relays and the fuses for all those circuits each light is 18 watts times three lights equals 54 watts and 54 watts divide by 14.5 volts equals 3.724 amps. So, uh, the circuit is rated at 10 amps. That should be more than plenty even to account for the length of the wire. So now, I need to do what I do best wiring. These should be pretty easy to deep pin. Since I got three of these things, I'm going to need to combine these guys. almost three hours it took to manufacture. Don't argue with me on that. I even replicated the factory harness, put some chafe abrasion where it goes past the top of the core support, Deutsch connector, and then uh, ground, so it's plug and play. Now the sucky part. I gotta try to route this thing through here and it's a lot thicker than it was before. That's what he said. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna be able to go through the way I wanted to. Again, I think that's what he said. One, two, three. There you go. Perfect. 
purple and gray goes to purple and green. Wiring complete. There's just that one little gray plug and then the ground falls up, goes right there to the ground point. Before I bring this thing outside, test out the lights and adjust them and show you the secret accessory that I bought for the lights, which was even harder to find than these lights themselves. I gotta put the drain line on for the oil catch can. Where's my catch can? There's the catch can, okay. It's right there. So that means, I mean, I could technically just make it drain into the wheel well, but. Uh, what an absolute perfect spot for this. I'll zip tie this guy right to this little bracket right here. And I'll cut it right here. So that way all I gotta do to drain it is pull this out, stick a bottle on it or a funnel, whatever, and I can drain the valve. Catch can complete. Big shout out to Nuke Performance for sponsoring that. Really appreciate those guys for doing that because I was just gonna buy it and they offered to send me that one as well as a second one which I'll be doing a giveaway on here at a car show at the shop this summer. And it's all routed, looks almost OEM, powder coated bracket, the black fittings, one's taller than the other so it's smooth. All right, auxiliary three, here it goes. Yay, they're on. This is just fog lights. I don't have the headlights on. I left them off so I could see. Oh yeah, that's awesome. That is so cool. You can see the Pia in the light where it's lit up. Okay, headlights on. So that's my low beams and those Pia's on at the same time. Yeah. Man, the Calvin temperature is almost the same. It's pretty close. Oh, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. There's one more part though. I got a set of three of these. They're amber covers, dust covers. These things were so hard to find, I don't know why. The lights themselves are hard to find in stock, but these were just hard to find, period. I only switched out one of them because I literally almost broke every single one of my nails trying to pop all those covers off. Those are not meant to be taken off easy. But yeah, that's absolute fire right there. I love that. I think I'm gonna keep the, I don't know. It's like 50-50, which one looks better. They both look good. The amber ties into the amber in the corner light. I don't know. I think I'll just leave the, the guard ones on just because I don't want to take any more of those off. That really hurt. Let me test, see what the amber looks like. Okay, that looks dope. What do you think? I like it. Yeah? Yeah. What do you like better? I like the amber because it's like off-road race truck. The amber does look sick. I like how the edges of it glow where it's wrapped around. That's kind of cool. It's pretty good chance I'm gonna end up putting the amber ones on, but for now I'm gonna leave these because I like them equally. I really can't pick which one I like better. I think they look equally as good. But I'm gonna know what you guys think. Let me know in the comment section below what you liked better, the amber or these. I think the benefit of these is they just match the grill of the truck so much better. But the amber ones tie in the amber parking lights and just amber looks sick on the front of this thing. It's a nice contrasting color because it's opposite in the color spectrum is blue and I don't know. Either way, I'm hungry. So I'm gonna shut up now and the next video you see project-wise will be on the Ranger. And that, that's all I gotta say. So I'll see you guys in another video. Bye. <laughs>